STAT students and welcome to a new video. This one is about random variables. This is the third in our uh, series of probability and random variables and let's just jump right into it. What's a random variable you ask? Well, a random variable is a variable, okay? So it's this, it's this amount, it's this, this, uh, uh, this, this quantity and you don't know what it is. It's kind of like a random event, okay? It's going to have a value. You just don't know what that value is yet. And the value that it's going to take, each different possible value, uh, has a certain probability associated with it. Okay? So, random variables, just like data, have a mean, a variance, and a standard deviation. And we're going to talk about how to uh, calculate those things right now. Okay? So, uh, first off, let's remember uh, about data. Okay? Let's remember about how to calculate the mean, the variance, the standard deviation. Okay? Mean, come on, that's easy. We've been doing that for years. All right? you, you add up all the values and you divide by the number of values that you have. And here's our, uh, our sigma notation using a summation sign. Okay? And, uh, and then what's the variance? The variance is uh, you take the distance or the difference between each data point and the mean. You square that, that difference and then you take the average squared differences, okay? The variance, just like the standard deviation, which is the, uh, the uh, square root of the variance, the variance and standard deviations are, and standard deviation are uh, measures of spread, okay? How spread out your data are, okay? And the, what's weird about the variance is that your units are squared units, which frequently are, has a weird meaning, okay? So uh, that's, how we, that's how we measure mean, variance, standard deviation of data. And so now we're going to start talking about mean, variance, and standard deviation of uh, random variables. First off, I want to get a little, little notation down, okay? When we talk about the expected value, that's the exact same thing as the mean, okay? Sometimes we use the word mean. Sometimes we use the words expected value. Sometimes we'll use uh, this notation here, E of X, okay? And then sometimes uh, the, the mu that you're familiar with, and we'll use a little subscript there for the mu of, for the mean of x, okay? That's how we write mean. Uh, variance, uh, you're familiar with that. We still use sigma square. We'll use a little subscript there to talk about which variable we're talking about, which random variable we're talking about. And standard deviation, you're familiar with that, all right? So expected value, mean, exact same thing. So let's look at an example. We have here, Wow, okay. Uh, we have here a, uh, a spinner, a shaky spinner. There it is. Okay, we have here this spinner, and I can flick this, uh, this little uh, arrow here, and it'll spin around, and it'll hit one of those numbers, 2, 4, 6, or 8. But, as you can tell, it's way more likely to end up on 2 than it is to end up on 8. And, as a matter of fact, uh, here we have the associated probabilities. This is called a probability model, or a probability distribution. Okay? It shows all the possible values of our random variable, and then it shows the associated probabilities with those, uh, with those uh, values. Okay? Uh, you may notice that uh, this looks kind of weird. Up here it says the probability that x equals x. Well, the big X, the capital X, that's our random var uh, variable. We almost always use capital uh, letters, usually x or y or sometimes z, uh, for the random variable. And then the little x, that's this thing over here. That's the possible values that it might take. Okay, so that's that's generally how we write our uh, our probability models. Uh, now, uh, if I were to let me go back here again, if I were to spin the spinner over and 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 over again, I get a whole bunch of data, right? Also, uh, note that if I spin it once, and it ends up on four. That doesn't affect how it's going to be the next time I spin it. So those will be independent events, okay? So I spin it a whole bunch of times, and I get the data, right? And so I would get some 8s and some 6s and some 4s and some 2s, and I'd have a lot more 2s than I would 8s. And what I can do is I can calculate the, uh, the mean of that data set, and I can calculate the variance and standard deviation of that data set, and that's what the mean uh, variance and standard deviation of my random variable are, okay? So, how would I calculate the mean? Well, I would say 1 over n times a whole bunch of 2s, plus a whole bunch of 4s, plus a whole bunch of 6s, plus a whole bunch of 8s. Now, how many 2s? Well, it would be about 40% of however many I have, okay? 
because there's a 0.4 probability of landing on a 2. So let's say I, just, I spin it tons and tons of times, and I get exactly 40% twos, okay? So I'm going uh, to just add up 2 that many times, which means 2 times this thing here, plus 4 times 30% of my uh, uh, spins, plus 6 times 20% of my spins, plus 8 times 10% of my spins. Now, if you look at this here, you can notice, hey, I can just factor out an n from all of these, and so I'll just put my n at the front there, and then look what I have. I have 1 over n times n. Let's just get rid of that, and what you end up with is 2 times 0.4, plus 4 times 0.3, plus 6 times 0.2, plus 8 times 0.1, which happens to be 2 times the probability of a 2, plus 4 times the probability of a 4, plus 6 times the probability of a 6, plus 8 times the probability of an 8, and what that is, is the sum of all my possible values, the product of all the possible values, and the, the uh, probability of getting that value. That's how you calculate the mean of a random variable. And in this case, it happens to be 4. Okay? So, uh, again, how do you calculate the mean of a random variable? You take every possible value that the random variable might, might take, multiply that value times the probability of it occurring, and then just sum them all up. And that's the mean or expected value of a random variable. Okay? So, uh, let's just compare real fast. Here's the mean of a data set. Here's the mean of a, uh, of a random variable. Uh, yes, a random variable. And you can see really the only difference is over here, I'm summing them up and dividing by n, whereas over here, I'm summing up the, uh, uh, the possible values times the probability of that occurring. Okay? Well, the way that you calculate the variance of a random variable is actually really, really similar, okay? Here's the variance of, a, uh, uh, of, of data, okay? Where you take this squared difference and uh, take the average of those. And here's the variance of a random variable. You take the squared uh, 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 difference between uh, uh, each possible value and the mean. You multiply that squared difference times the probability of this data point occurring, and then you add all those up, okay? That's the variance of a, uh, of a random variable. It measures the spread of the data, and it kind of, uh, the, way I think of, uh, the way I think of it in terms of a random variable is it's the, uh, it's the volatility of the random variable, okay? It's how, how dispersed the values might be, okay? So, uh, how do we calculate? Let's just look at the nuts and bolts of how we calculate the, uh, the variance of a random variable. Okay? Here we have our probability model here. Okay? Our x's, our possible values, times the associated probabilities. So here I take the, the, the difference between each possible value and the mean. If you remember, the mean was 4. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. 6 minus 4 is 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. And that's how we get that column there. This column here is merely this thing squared, okay? This squared is that, this squared is that, this squared is that, and et cetera. And then this column here is this column times this column. So 0.4 times 4 is 1.6, 0.3 times 0 is 0, 0.2 times 4 is 0 0.8, 0 0.1 times 16 is 1.6. And if you add all those up, what you get is the variance, which in this case also happens to be 4. So our mean is 4, our variance are, is 4, and how do you calculate the, the standard deviation? It's always the square root of the variance, okay? So the standard deviation in this case is 2, all right? Uh, now, let's talk about uh, what happens if you have a random variable, and you've calculated the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. What happens if you add something to that? For example, for example uh, here I have uh, my original spinner, and here I have an altered spinner. What's the difference? Well, I've gone from 8 to 13, from 6 to 11, from 4 to 9, from 2 to 7. I think it's pretty obvious that what I've done is I've added 5 to each of these here. So if this, if this is x, this would be x plus 5. All right? Well, uh, let's look at, uh, uh, at what our values would look like. I would, here's my histogram that's associated with, uh, with the uh, possible values in this spinner. And here's the histogram associated with the possible values of this spinner. And what you see is everything has just been shifted up to the right five units, which means our mean is also going to be shifted up to the right five units, which that's not real surprising, okay?
Now, uh, what about the variance, though? Okay, well, what's the difference between how spread out this is and how spread out this is? None. What that means is the variance is unchanged. And if the variance is unchanged, so is the standard deviation. Okay? So what we have is uh, the expected value of a random variable plus a constant is just the mean of that random variable plus the constant. Whereas if you add a constant to a random variable, uh, the variance is unchanged and the standard deviation is unchanged. Okay? Now let's talk about what, you, what happens when you multiply a constant with a random variable. Okay? So instead of adding something, I'm multiplying something now. Here's my original spinner, 2468. Here's my new spinner, 6, 12, 18, 24. So this time, I've taken my random variable and I've multiplied it by 3. Okay? Again, let's look at the uh, associated histograms. Here's our original one, and here's the new one. Now, uh, so our 2 bar has moved to 6, our 4 bar has moved to 12, our 6 has moved to 18, our 8 has moved to 24. It's pretty easy, I think everybody can agree with me, that if the original mean was 4, the new mean is going to be 12. Okay? All of our values got multiplied by 3, so the average of all those values will also be multiplied by 3. Okay? Now, what about the variance? Well, this time something happened to the variance. It's a lot more spread out than it was originally. So, let's take a look at it. Well, alright, so I'm saying y is this one and x is this one. Okay? So the variance of y is, there's my, the definition of my variance. Okay? And uh, each, of my, each of my possible y data points is 3 times the x data point, right? And my, my mean of y, is, my mu, is 3 times the mu of x, the so 3 times the mean of x. And, uh, well, the probabilities are exactly the same because, as you can see, the, uh, the, the areas on the spinner are exactly the same. Okay? Well, now, in order to factor out this 3 here, it's being squared. So if I factor out the 3, I'll actually factor out a 9 because it's being squared. And now this is simply uh, the variance of x. And so what I end up with is 9 times the variance of x. So when I multiply my random variable by 3, the variance got multiplied by 9. And uh, this happens no matter what the multiple is, that when you multiply uh, a random variable by a constant, the variance gets multiplied by the square of that constant. The standard deviation gets multiplied by the absolute value, and that's simply because standard deviation has to be positive. Okay? So the, the, the absolute value, it's pretty easy to remember because you can, just, you can easily remember that the standard deviation always has to be positive. Okay? Um, so, uh, what if you do both? What if you multiply a random variable by something and then add something to it? Well, basically you just combine the two rules that we just saw. Okay? Uh, if I take uh, a random variable x, I multiply by a and then I add c, what's going to happen to the mean? Well, you just multiply the mean by a and you add c. Okay? It's just that uh, the mean undergoes the exact same, tra the exact same transformation that each of the, the, uh, that the random variable underwent. Okay? What about my variance? Well, if you remember, adding C didn't do anything to it, and multiplying it by A meant that you multiply your variance by A squared, and that's exactly right. We have A squared times the variance of X squared, as of the variance of X, or A squared times sigma squared. Okay? And if your variance is A squared times sigma squared, then that means your standard deviation is going to be the absolute value of A times sigma. We don't have to worry about taking the absolute value of sigma because sigma is already positive, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay? Now, now, last thing we're going to look at, what happens when you take two random variables, independent random variables, and add them up together? How can we calculate the, uh, the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of those things? Well, here's our spinner. Okay, we're, we're, uh, uh, we're familiar with that. And then here's a coin. We're going to flip this coin. We're either going to get heads or tails, and I'm going to say uh, I'm going to assign zero to heads and one to tails. So we're counting up the number of tails uh, that we get from all these uh, uh, flips. Okay. Well, actually, we're just flipping it once, so it's either zero or one. Okay. And it's a fair coin, so that means there's a 0.5 probability associated with both of them. Uh, if you remember over here, the expected value was four. The variance was also four. The standard deviation is the square root of four, so it's two. And over here, uh, I'm not going to work it out for you. I'm going to—you can do that yourself if you want to. But what you get is the expected value is 
0.5, that's easy, it's the average of these two things. The variance is 0.25, which means our standard deviation is also 0.5, okay? Now, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to add it to this thing, and this is what it's going to look like. Here's our nice little tree here. Uh, you can see, uh, here's the spinner. Here are the possible values on the spinner, and you get 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Those are the, the probabilities associated with it. Then after you spin the spinner, you flip the coin, and here are the uh, associated probabilities with the coin. You'll notice that each of these branches is identical. That means they're independent events, okay? They're independent random variables. And then we're going to add up 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 4 plus 0 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, and we get these totals and these probabilities, and that is our probability model, which will stick over here in this nice little table here, okay? There's our probability model and all the associated probabilities. By the way, you all remember, if you add up these probabilities, it better equal 100% or 1, otherwise you have something missing there, okay? So, uh, uh, what's going to be the mean variance in standard deviation of this random variable? It's kind of hard to calculate. Well, it's not hard to calculate it, but it's a little tedious to calculate. And uh, again, I'm going to let you uh, uh, do that. Uh, but what it turns out to be is that the mean is 4.5, the variance is 4.25, and the standard deviation is just the, uh, the square root of the variance. But what does that have to do with these numbers? Well, what it has to do with is that 4.5 is 4 plus 0.5. 4.25 is 4 plus 0.25. So what that means is the mean of the sum is the sum of the means. And the mean of the vari and the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. Standard deviation? Uh uh. It's just the, the square root of the variance. Okay? First calculate the variance, then take the square root of that, and that's your standard deviation. Alright. Uh, so uh, uh, that's what I was just saying. So if you add up your two different independent random variables, uh, the, the, mean, uh, the mean of the sum is the sum of the means, the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. And uh, what about if you subtract random variables? Well, uh, it's, uh, you can think of subtracting random variables as adding two random variables where you just multiply the second one times negative one, okay? And if you do that, well, let's think about it. The expected value of negative 1 times y is just going to be negative expected value of y. So you're just going to get the difference of the expected values there. But here, the variance of negative 1 times y, we would square this, which is just going to get you 1. And so what that means is it's going to be the variance of x plus the variance of y. People forget that a lot, okay? That even though you're taking the difference of two random variables, the variance actually gets added. That's if the random variables are independent. It's only true if they're independent, okay? So this is really sort of a combination of the two uh, sets of rules that we just came up with. The expected value of x plus or minus y is mean of x plus or minus the mean of y. Uh, the variance of x plus or minus y is always variance of x plus variance of y. You never subtract, you always add. And then the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Okay? So, oh, if and only if x and y are independent random variables. Okay? Only if they're independent. If they're not independent, all bets are off. You can't use any of this. Okay? So, what should you have learned from all of this? Well, one thing you should have learned is what a random variable is. And the, the fact that you can take the mean uh, variance and standard deviation of a random variable. And then uh, uh, the formulas, okay, how to actually calculate the mean variance and standard deviation of a random variable. Then uh, uh, what happens when you multiply or add a constant, or multiply and add a constant uh, to this random variable? What happens to the mean variance and standard deviation? And then uh, what we just talked about, the sum and differences of random variables and what happens to the mean variance and standard deviation there. Uh, this, is gonna, this is the cornerstone of what we're going to be doing uh, for the rest of this semester. And so yeah, it's pretty important that you know this. Next video is going to be 
uh, on probability models. Okay, we looked at these probability models here. We, we looked at, the, at some some uh, uh, examples of probability models, but the next video is going to be on very common probability models. Uh, in particular, we're going to look at the normal model again. That thing never goes away. We're also going to look at uh, uh, the binomial random variable, which is an extremely important random variable. And I will see you then. Thank you.